Hi, in this video we will look into state space methodology for feed forward control design and in the last video we had considered the feed forward design and we have also seen when to use it and how to design using the transfer function effect, transfer function way. Whereas in this video we will see how we can use the feed forward method for set point tracking. So far we have seen it, what can we do for set point changes. At the same time we will connect it with the state space representation or st state space methodology method for designing the uh, feed forward, uh, feed forward uh, control. We will also take one example of vibration control application which is a very popular um, idea on using this uh, feed forward methodology for controlling the vibrations instead of feedback wave. All right, let's see what we are talking about set point tracking. This set point tracking, uh, we what we want here is to track the reference input R, where this reference input R is changing with time. Means it is not a constant, just giving a step input and keeping it constant for some time. Whereas the input R is changing, varying with time. All right, so. What we want here is that the output y of t should chase r of t, should approach r of t the way it is changing as t tends to infinity. So it is a definitely a more difficult problem when r of t is an arbitrary, arbitrary signal instead of a known signal. So r of t is changing the way, uh, the change in the r, the input, the reference input signal is not known to us. Let us see how we can design the control, feed forward control using the state space model. We already know our state space representation is for LTI system is given by x dot equals ax plus bu and y is equal to cx plus du. In order to design a simple feedback controller, we consider that uh, control input u is a feedback, some, some gain k, k times the input u, uh, k times the state times. So what we consider in, in, in case of a feedback based, uh, uh, a simple feed, gain feedback controller is that we consider u as, this slide is repeated again. Um, Let us see how we can design the feed forward controller using the state space model way. What we have here is x dot equals ax plus bu, y is equal to cx plus du. Instead of a transfer function way of representing, representing a system, we are representing it using a state space model. For a simple feedback gain based uh, design, we consider the transfer function, we consider the control input u given by minus kx. And as soon as we substitute this in x dot equals ax plus bu, what we get is ax minus bkx or a minus bk times x. So what we have to consider that in the design is a minus bk should be, should be stable enough, stable in order for the controller to work properly. So here what we will consider is that for example, again we will start with constant reference input r, similar to the transfer function way we have seen it. If that is what is my constant reference input r, then my steady state uh, in uh, steady state is some nx times r, where nx is a vector. So control input u at, is now can be given by minus k x minus xs plus USS. So in the previous case we were considering that um, our equilibrium is at the origin instead of now we are considering that our equilibrium is such that it is reaching to XSS. So that is the reason for this transformation, this kind of correction needed. Now this is what the, the uh, at, at, X is, at the steady state my, st my, my state is going to be at XSS. So this term is going to be 0 and for that steady, at the steady state 
we will have some bias USS sitting here. The similar way I am calling this as a bias here. So this USS is nothing but the input given at the steady state to remain at x axis because this term is turning out to be 0. So this finite input USS say is given by nu times r and this is required to maintain the in the the uh, steady state this is this is the input required for to maintain the steady state at xss all right so now the design part of it so what we will do here in order to find nx and nu is we will just substitute the values at steady state so steady state has already reached so these this is what turns out to be my steady state relationship so xss is anyway nx type r and uss is anyway nu times r is what we had considered or what what i'm i'm writing it here again which is nx times r and uss is nothing but nu times r where r is my reference input all right so my uh, next equation YSS is CX plus DU at steady state is now getting modified to something like this. So my at the steady state my output follows the reference R is whatever uh, demand is. So when we try solving this using uh, the method uh, the matrix manipulation itself it turns out that we can write in the matrix form something like this. Now with ABCD known we will be able to find what should be nx and nu. It is very simple, simple math here now. nx gives you minus b by a. Sorry, minus a by b. Minus b by a. All right. Okay. Once again nx equals minus a by b okay and similarly nu can be obtained uh, with the independent equation that we have all right now control law can be uh, since my control law is given by u equals minus k x minus x s s plus u s s i am simply substituting x s x as nx times r and uss is nu times r. So my control input can be given by minus kx times this. I am saying that this is less robust and why? It is inevitable that we found nu and nx from the values of a, b, c and d. We just found that nu should be equal to minus a by b. It means I should know the, uh, the system model very much accurately. If I know the matrix system matrix A and input matrix B very accurately, I will be able to design my NU correctly and I will be able to design NX correctly if C and D are known to me. And of course, R is the input reference that is given to me. Uh, uh, th this particular control input can be, can, can can give y reaching to r if nu and nx are perfectly matching with the model parameters. It is completely dependent on the model parameters and that is the reason it is less robust. All right, so far we have been chasing the constant reference input r. What happens if my, my tracking is to be done when r of t is changing rapidly? All right. So what we will do here in this case is nu and nx, we already know that nu and nx rely on the information on the plan. Even for slowly varying reference input, tracking will not be accurate because it is dependent on the information on the plan itself. All right, so what to do now? The hack here is to add integrator. Integrator will uh, do the job for uh, for making sure that the input r is getting integrated and that is what you are trying to achieve uh, the objective here. So this particular uh, adding the integrator 
in the state space way can be done in the following way. We will augment the system state by an extra state which is xi dot. Now as soon as I am adding this xi dot in this particular form, how is it giving me the reference being integrated or the output being integrated and this is what is getting chased for. Let us see that. If we see these equations, we have xi dot given by c times xi plus r, sorry c times x plus r, c times x plus r, whereas x dot is given by a times x plus b plus bu. This is my system, is system um, state space model representation, no change into it. What we augmented is this particular state xi, which is nothing but if I say xi is nothing but integral of cx plus r, correct. And now if I try looking at its block diagram, so what is happening is this xi in, in overall in the state space way, we try looking into that the entire state which is xi and x is approaching the origin. It means the xi should also approach to 0 if I am representing in this way. But if I try to understand it from the block diagram way, what we have here is this system block with its transfer with its state x, input u, output y. Now this particular y is of course since we say y is equal to cx, this particular cx is fed back when we try writing this something similar in a transfer function way or in a block diagram way. Now this cx plus r is integrated, right? So what we have, we, 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 we typically have is like this, this is my reference r and this there is an integrator 1 by s. Since this is an LTI system, I can clearly say that okay, I what I am giving it to the as, as a feedback is the integrated output. Similarly, integrated reference input, which I can always make sure that there is some error coming out of it and I design a controller here, which is uh, in, in, in a feedback controller gain form is kx. Uh, u is equal to kx form. So of course we already know that we can have the signal flow diagram, blocks can be moved here and there, uh, uh, here and there as in you know in a proper uh, method way. So I can remove these 1 by s and 1 by s from here and can add now after the, this is my summer block which is error which was similar to my this thing, but now I will have an integrator sitting here. I just moved the integrator from this path and this path to the forward path. This is possible. This is this is what my block diagram way is. So sim so this is now giving me xi, some 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 form of xi, and this is being controlled. So u is now can be can be extracted and from x can be designed with the help of xi and x and can provide you the necessary reference tracking. This reference tracking is being done with the help of integrator now. All right. So if I look at the feed forward way of this, feed forward representation of this, the feed forward part is coming from this integrator that we have added. Now this integrator is helping me in, uh, in, in achieving the tracking as compared to just the set point regulation uh, and that is what the trick is and one can do it with the help of the state space way or the transfer function way whichever is more convenient to you. All right. Let us take an another wonderful example of vibration control which is being achieved with the help of feed forward way. Now, we uh, use this particular feed forward open loop control technique for input shaping. So we have been applying, so here what in the previous case what we did was the input was modified based on the, with the help of the integrator or whatnot. 
Now, if I have to shape this particular integrator in some way such that the output is not generating certain undesired factors is what uh, we will look into it here. So, when, when there are vibrations, so if for example there is an automobile and the, 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 this is rather a very good example for the vibration control, the driver should not experience, the seat should be designed such that driver does not experience the vibrations when a particular when, when a bump comes in. Bump comes in, of course it will experience some kind of uh, uh, disturbance, but after this bump, once the bump is there, it should not keep vibrating on it. At the same time, the seat is sitting on a spring as well because of to, to avoid such uh, bigger jerks and so on in order to give the, the, the uh, pleasant experience to the driver for, for uh, the seating experience and so on. So here what we have is the, um, we can consider is that two rigid bodies are connected through a spring and damper, damper arrangement. Now it will have the, uh, as soon as the disturbance come, it will, uh, sorry, it will have the flexible, uh, because, because of the flexible system, it will have certain vibrations and so on. And these residual, residual vibrations are to be controlled is the control objective uh, set for the vibration control. So we can model this particular flexible system by considering two masses connected through the spring and the damper system. This particular displacement of this particular mass is x1 and this particular mass is x2. So then one can write the, the uh, spring balance, uh, mass, mass spring balance uh, equations and can write the dynamical equations like this. But it is important to, to understand what we want to achieve. We want to achieve such that the displacement of two masses should move in sync. All right. So then we will consider the flexible mod, uh, two modes of the uh, two modes for this particular system. One is the rigid body motion, which is like both of them are moving in sync. So the average displacement of the mass is given by x1 plus x2 by 2. Whereas flexible motion is involved when the two masses are not moving in sync, means how much ever the first mass is moving, the second mass is moving with some, some, some other displacement and there is a mismatch between these two displacement. And we call this as E equals x1. We represent it as x1 minus x2. Of course, our objective is to make sure that this E approaches 0. So that the, uh, the flexibility is like dampened out. Now we can write the previous um, dynamical equations in this particular form very easily. We have 2 m y double dot equals u and m uh, in the form of these transform variables y and e, it turns out to be these two equations. So our methodology for the vib vibration control will be to avoid the flexible mode as we mentioned because we do not want the two masses to move very differently, right. So this mass has moved, car has moved, car body has moved, the seat should also move in its sink. It should not keep vibrating uh, once the car has settled down to again in the, has, has moved out of the bump. So if that is what the control objective is, then the control of the rigid body mode will be quite trivial and intuitive. All right. So now let's generalize it. Let's say there are such um, n-mode structures and then each of them are having the uh, natural frequency omega j and zeta j and the day, uh, uh, and the system dynamics is now given by x dot equals a x plus u. So now each of this block a j is introducing a uh, second order system given by omega j this particular system matrix and each of the block is giving this particular kind of an input system matrix, input matrix. Whereas the, the, uh, the state vector is now given by 
x1, x2, x3, x4 where each of this x3, x4, x3, x4 are repeated for individual blocks. x1 is corresponding to the rigid body and therefore for that omega naught is equal to 0. x1 and x2 are of course position and velocities of the uh, rigid body mode, right. Now x3 and x a, x3 and x4 of these as I mentioned is the uh, are the states corresponding to the flexible mode position and the velocity. So E and E dot from taken from the previous slide. Okay. In order to understand the, the design of the input shaper or the feed forward design here, we will consider one mode case. All right. So for the first mode, for, for only one mode means only two, two mass structures and only one uh, spring, spring and damper system in between. For that, my system matrix turns out to be A1 and turns out to be given by A1 and B1 here. All right. Now, what we will consider here as the input is two impulses, one at time t equal to 0 and other at time t equal to t. So, we will be giving two impulses, one at time t, t. So, this is what the shaping methodology that we are evolving. And these inputs are now, now, now at a distance of 2 pi by omega. Let us see why, why we have considered this. Let us say now delta t because of this particular impulse, it generates a sinusoid. So then t minus t, it will generate anti sign. So what we have is for example, because of delta t, what we get here is a sinusoid of this side in the flexible mode. So what we want to do here is after t seconds, for example, here we want to consider, so this is, this is what is my t. So what we want to consider here is this should generate an anti-sinusoid. When we combine these, what will happen is this gets subtract, get negated with this and that is why it will after one time period the vibration control is being handled with the help of extra input that you have added which is generating the anti sinusoid for you. All right, Because my system response was sinusoidal we could understand this better and so and so forth. But at the same time if I have some other random input given some something some arbitrary input r of t is given then my u of t turns out to be nothing but since my, my, uh, my input shaper is having this kind of a um, uh, this, this kind of a system model system response then this is nothing but the convolution with r of t and, and h of t which gives me r of t minus r of t minus t. So what is it? For example, my arbitrary signal is given by this which is which is having the um, signal, it is a pulse of tf seconds, right. And now my input shaper is having this particular impulse response which is h of t is given by delta t minus delta t minus t. When we convolve with this, we get this uh, signal which is uh, of course it was till tf at time t equal to t, we also have the, the um, opposite signal given and this is what we get as because of the second second impulse the superposition of first and second impulse we get this kind of input to be given. So what the idea is instead of giving this input which was representing a bump the one has to modify the input something like this. Now this modification happens because of this kind of an impulse shaper that we design for. All right. So this turns out to be in the block diagram form. This is my R of t. Input shaper is H of t, and this is now applied to your system. This can be combined with some feedback form and whatnot. Is 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 a is a part of the other thing. But in order to avoid this flexible mode, 
we have added this H of T block or the input shaper at the input of the signal. And that is where this is a way of feed forward design. We had seen earlier the feed forward design in terms of a transfer function way or a state space way, here it is in time domain, where the interpretation turns out to be shaping the input based on the, the flexible mode time period and so on and so forth. Okay? So here we can see that there will be no vibration after t seconds after the command r of t has stopped. So if a bump comes of tf, we will see that after this particular because of this input shaper what will happen is that after, because we have applied a negative impulse from here onwards the vibrations are going to be damped up. All right. So this can be since we have understood this for the single mode. One has to one can apply this particular input shaping for multiple modes also. There could be one can one can consider this particular the uh, between car and the seat there are multiple modes. We, we, the flexibility within that can be a piecewise block extension and so my input u of t can be given as the summation of these all these t minus t i's where these t i's are nothing but individual modes that we can that, that is possible uh, because of the two masses in between. What, what is it between two masses kind of? So one can approximate this particular, one can model this particular engagement between the seat and the car as multiple masses piecewise way one can consider those interfaces and so on. One has to design the input shaper, uh, input shaper for all these TIs. All right. For each of these modes, one has to make sure that the input is coming, is being applied at these TIs. Of course, one has to look forward for identifying these modes uh, and this is, a, this is a system model identification problem. These, these contents of this slide has been especially the vibration control uh, method has been taken up from this, part, this particular site. And, uh, and the recent one is from the uh, June 2000 article. The idea here is to give you an insight into what you can do by simply applying it in an open loop way because my feed forward part is coming in a forward channel is more like modifying the input in an appropriate way such that feedback methods can be used more efficiently. Thank you.